All right, let's move on to Friday, later Friday afternoon, Memphis, Iowa State in the AutoZone Liberty Bowl. This will be played in Memphis, Tennessee. Noteworthy because it's on Memphis's home field stadium in uh, Simmons Bank Liberty Stadium. Iowa State's up to a 10-point favorite here, over under 57 and a half. Memphis does play at home, but it's not too far from Ames. Iowa State fans travel well, so I don't think it's going to be like this overwhelming crowd advantage here. Memphis, I talked about all year. They finished nine and three. They were pretty fraudulent. I mean, they barely beat Navy. They beat Boise State by three at home thanks to a blocked field goal return. They beat UAB. They barely beat North Texas on a last-minute touchdown. They beat South Florida 59-50. to They beat Charlotte in overtime. So, you know, this is a team that skated by some bad teams. The defense is really bad. They will give up explosives, which is what Iowa State relies on. Memphis also is going to be about a couple starting offensive linemen. They can't tackle. Yeah, they can't tackle. Iowa State is just – they're going to score. I think they'll care. Um, but I, I just can't get to this number. I can't like 10. I can't bet Memphis – I think that this is one where I'll I'll probably sit on the sidelines for. What do you see here? What do you got? I like Iowa State, and I know it, it seems like a really large number. I power rate this game to be Iowa State minus nine versus Memphis if it was played during the regular season. I guess if you were to throw in home field advantage, although I agree with you, uh, the cycle people from the state of Iowa travel like no other. It yeah. doesn't matter what the sport is, they travel. So Seth Hennigan is going to face a three three five stack defense of Iowa State. He saw the three three five a lot. In, and by the way, I should say before you go, Memphis can't really run the ball, which is really how you kind of want to attack this Iowa State team. So go ahead. Yep. Yeah. I mean, Hennigan was average against the three three five. Uh, he's going to go up against exclusive quarters here. He wasn't fantastic against that either, what he saw in conference play. I would argue this is a way better three three five version and quarters version than anything that he saw in the AAC. The loss of TJ Tampa is pretty big for the Iowa State secondary one of the best defensive backs in all of college football. So we'll see what Iowa state does there, but you know, Iowa state will not be able to produce a pass rush that hasn't been in their numbers all season, but that's not really how they play on defense. Anyways, zone read option of Hennigan with Blake Watson. They were above average and success rate. Iowa struggled a little bit to defend inside zone. Explosives were a wash when it came to Memphis's offense versus Iowa state's defense. So I just don't see a lot happening here for Memphis. And when you mentioned being fraudulent, their second order win total. They're they're going to take one of the biggest downgrades in the offseason in my power ratings. Now, Rocco Beck, quarterback for Iowa State, he was better than expected this year. I mean, you think about the gambling scandal that happened and everybody pounded on the under of a win total that was like five. Rocco Beck is just, man, just a cool, nice, fresh drink of water there for that offense. Beck creates a lot of explosives. He has the best standard downs, expected points, explosives in the country. I couldn't believe it. Memphis also runs a 3-3-5 with cover one. Beck averaged an explosive pass. This is a crazy stat. Beck averaged an explosive pass on 25% of attempts against cover one. One of every four pass attempts against cover one was an explosive. That's what he's going to see against Memphis. So slot Jalen Noel, wide out Jaden Higgins. They lead in targets on the team for the Cyclones. They both average more than 2.6 yards per route run. That is extremely explosive. Give me Iowa State. I'll swallow the points here. Love them. 